Teşekkürler e, Eren ve Yeliz. E, gün içerisinde ara ara oturum, oturum aralarında beraber olmuştuk. Şimdi de günün son oturumunda e, çok değerli bir konu ağırlıyor olacağız. E, tenis deyince akla iki tane hatta üç tane büyük kurum geliyor. Ama kadın tenisi deyince çok büyük bir kurum var ki o da e, Kadın Tenis Birliği yani Women Tennis Association. Şimdi ise bu kurumun e, lideri. Mickey Lowley ağırlayacağız. Oturum İngilizce olacak. Dolayısıyla bundan sonra İngilizce devam edeceğim. Hello Mickey. Hello Emir. Nice to see you. Uh, nice to have you here. Uh, thank you for joining us. I know it's the end of the year and WTA has a lot going on, planning out to 2021. Uh, thank you for taking the time. We really appreciate it. It is my great pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much. Um, I know a lot's been going on and it's been a difficult, difficult year. Um, and, you know, many organizations had to make difficult decisions. Um, can you please describe how WTA <clears throat> is navigating through this crisis, the ongoing pandemic? Yes, I will do my best. So uh, the navigation of this crisis is against a very difficult backdrop uh, of a very difficult chapter in human history. So the sensitivity to the enormous tragedy that is playing out in the world through losing human lives at an unprecedented rate and trying to manage infection levels growing country by country um, sometimes the logical and the practical measures that have to be taken as an organization seem a little bit meaningless but obviously they're not we just have to balance respect for the bigger the bigger backdrop um, with the the practical steps that we have to take so for our players and our tournaments, it was very important that we establish health protocols in order to be able to get back to play as soon as possible, which we did. So it involved a lot of work with our medical teams, our sports science and medicine teams, and uh, we did produce a set of very, very detailed set of, of um, protocols that are adopted by the tournaments were adopted from the moment that we returned to play in July of this uh, this year. Then, before that happened, we also worked very hard on adapting and uh, figuring out ways to support our broadcasters and our partners by creating content mm -hmm. that was compelling and that could be used on media platforms mm -hmm. because you know there were 36 global broadcasters that all of a sudden went dark not only dark because there was no tennis but there was no sport so we did our very best to to re-edit classic matches to work with our athletes and our athletes were fantastic in terms of um, providing work at home videos and sharing with us nutrition tips and um, just creating a lot of a lot of non-live content uh, which is what uh, the only thing that we could do but I think we we worked as a team really well together and um, and delivered in, in a very difficult time that of course continues we may be at the end of the year but we're not at the end um, I think one of the most important uh, things that you have pointed out was, you know, creating jobs for players. I think that was very important because there are thousands of players who see sees these tournaments as jobs. So deciding that uh, continuing on these tournaments is deciding on the uh, careers or the livelihoods of those players. I, I believe that played a very important role. Absolutely. And it's, of course, the, the players and the tournaments. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and and everyone that is involved with those with those core uh, groups so coaches and physical mm -hmm. trainers and uh, tournament personnel so it was and i imagine it's the same for every industry you want to minimize the financial damage of the covid crisis and um and get people back to work as soon as possible so that's that's what we did we all became very good lemonade makers with very bad lemons yes um it's it's a very difficult year but um it also showed us that you know we can work together and bring uh, great projects uh, so there, there has been lots of novelties happening at your end uh, that I would like to get get into more. Uh, but you know, all, I believe all of these are in relation with the WTA's history. So I would like to get your opinion on something. Uh, WTA has an incredibly rich history. Uh, you know, f from 1970s with the original nine. Uh, you know, uh, the principle of uh, equal opportunity for women. You know, a Billie Jean King start an incredible uh, project, incredible movement. So, what is your opinion about this rich history, and uh, how does it feel to run an organization with a history like this? Well, it's a tremendous privilege and a tremendous responsibility. It is really the history that the past that enables the future to, to happen and determines the opportunities available in the future. So the bold step that the original nine took in, in 1970 was incredibly courageous. And um, it was then that the virtues of what the WTA is today really developed and became the DNA of the WTA. So e even though our mentality is always the mentality of a startup company, in other words, you know, we never get comfortable and, uh, and we always look to what more, how high, how, how high can we jump and how fast can we do it? Um, but the, the, the role that the WTA, Billie Jean and the original nine played in the right social shift is of course, still ongoing today and it's something that i'm personally very proud of because it's thanks to that courage that i sit in this chair today and um and it's it, it's just um it, it's a huge responsibility that i'm very proud to be able to fulfill um when we look back uh, 50 years uh, and when we look back now uh, from one dollar contracts uh, to the million dollar industry that the WTA has built. Uh, you know, now nine out of 10 uh, most top earning women sports professionals are tennis players. There has been an incredible development uh, uh, in this area. So how do you evaluate this progress and this development? How did it happen? And what is the global foot footprint of WTA today? So I think that the big lesson in the journey is that men and women are best together. So when we as a society evaluate um, the role of the evolving role of women and, and what that does to society, it should be a win-win and it is an absolute fact that we're better together. So that is actually how how our success was was enabled was because we were able to play on the same stage as the men as the male players at the grand slams and it was at the grand slams that we were earning 10 percent of what the men were earning so that whole evolution was only made possible because we shared a stage and then the wta went to smaller markets where the atp was not um, as it was building out, it was, um, it, it, you know, interestingly, sport does, the, the, geo the geographic market of the sport often follows a champion athlete. So 
even ATP became very big in Sweden because Bjorn Borg was a superstar and followed, followed by many Swedes who became superstars in their own right. And we see this all the time, you know, Lina in China, Caroline Wozniacki in Denmark and Poland and, and Aga Radwanska in Poland and Serena and Venus in the US, you know, on and on. Mm -hmm. we, we root for our, for our champions, right? So that builds incredible market opportunity. And that is what hel helped us become global and and um, as big as we are today. And I compare it to um, the warm-up band at a concert. You know, if you go to see Coldplay, then there's a warm-up band in the beginning. And maybe the WTA was that warm-up band. And then this this band evolves, grows, becomes better and better, and now they have a warm-up band, and they're the cold play of the day. So it's a little bit like that. You mm -hmm. know, you have to go through a business building process in order to get to, um, you know, your your destiny. But you never get to your, your end destination because hopefully there is no end and it just continues to evolve and and evolve in a, in a positive direction. So, again, I think... The source of our success is the fact that we are able to share the stage with the men and offer something equally exciting and maybe a little bit different. It completes tennis as a sport, and that's that's where the success lies. Um, I think um, you know WTA is doing an incredible job, and you know I think stay. Staying innovative and fresh is one of the most important things in uh, staying at the top of the attention. Uh, and now, just recently, uh, WTA introduced a uh, new corporate identity, re redefined the organization's strength as a collective unit of inspiring and inspiring athletes and tournaments. And also, this uh, rebranding includes the first logo de design in 10 years, and all renewed visual communication tools, simplified numerical naming system for WTA. There was a huge change uh, in the past couple of weeks. Uh, I would like to ask you, what was the objective and the strategy uh, behind these changes, and why now? Well, the why now is, is coincidental, and, and ended up being great timing, uh, silver lining. The, as you pointed out, it is important to continue to innovate and to refresh. And this refresh was um, in the works for, for a while. You know, these things take time and you need to get buy-in from all your stakeholders and you need to work also on the timeline uh, timelines of those stakeholders. So for, for me personally, uh, I, thought it was very important to provide a visual connection with our brand identity. I thought that we could do better and um, and so that was number one. Mm -hmm. Creating a visual identity of um, you know a, a, a connection to who we are. It, our previous logo didn't say women's tennis. This says uh, we are women's tennis. We use the serve motion to show grace, control, in charge of our of our destiny, and um, and I, I personally think it looks really beautiful, which is what our sport is. It's really graceful and beautiful, and um, and then as far as the nomenclature for the tournament levels to describe the tournament levels, I I think sometimes we need to step back from our own world and take a um, 30 foot thousand, 30,000 foot level view of what we're doing. And what we were offering the fan was a bit confusing in terms mm -hmm. of nomenclature uh, and explaining the levels of our tournaments. So because there are so many stakeholders in tennis, there are seven, we thought if we, as both professional leagues, if we come together and at least present one um, one nomenclature for our tournament levels, it, it's already a big step. So it was a matter of, of simplifying the message. 
I personally think the new uh, colors are striking. Uh, the logo is incredibly beautiful. And also the message is very powerful. Um, there is a video, uh, the video that WTA produced, uh, which I would like to show right now on the screen. Video in atebilir miyiz lütfen? This is for the women who broke barriers then, so we can break records today. This is for those who told us we can't, and for those who never stop believing. This is for the grind, for being better today than we were yesterday, and for those who will define tomorrow. This is for us, for you, for them, for her. This is for the game. This is for the game, and WTA for the game. Uh, it's a very strong message. Um, what does it mean? Uh, why is it important? Why this message is important for the WTA? Well, I believe it enables us to really present a, a beautiful image of a collective, so a community, which mm -hmm. is the tennis community, and at the same time dive into the individual's purpose. So as a community, we're very purpose-driven. We were created through purpose and courage, and so um, it is that, that purpose that binds us, but also there are different purposes that drive each player, each tournament, you, me, um, each inhabitant of this community. So for the game gives us that ability of expression. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the campaign materials, the templates that we've created. So the logo is classic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very, you know, women's tennis. It says women's tennis. But the campaign materials around it are very abstract built around the lines of a tennis court so imagery imagery fits beautiful this is for the women the who fonts. broke barriers then so we can break records and the, today and the uh, and the this colors is for those who told us we sorry are you showing yeah, they the they they comes? really like the video <laughs> that's why they wanted to run it again but they, it's in silent now you can you can yeah. continue. So, so you see in the video, you see the lines of the tennis court. You see that the fonts and the coloring, it all works beautifully together. Yep. And I think, you know, logo is the symbol of uh, what that um, company stands. And I think backing up that logo with the manifesto and uh, this campaign, I think it's incredibly strong. Uh, I personally loved it and um, it's it's a great success um, in addition to thank you thank you, you know, very much yeah in addition to you know staying fresh uh, like I said before innovation is a key element in progressing uh, in this uh, in sports business and WTA did, uh, WTA also did an incredible job there now it has more than seven 700 million uh, viewers, uh, followers all around the world, you know, more than 4 million uh, social media followers on uh, social media platforms. Now WTA has its own TV, uh, WTA TV, and also uh, WTA recently launched uh, a platform, an OTT platform in China. And you were the one who were designing all this strategy. Uh, can you explain us what was the strategy behind these investments and projects and how does uh, technology changes uh, the way WTA engages with its global uh, community? Well, I think in, in developing all of these elements, your North Star is the fan. Mm -hmm. What is the fan looking for? And today's fan is um, technologically savvy. They, uh, you know, we have data available. We, we have technology available in, in all walks of life. So we need to use it and we need to use it to facilitate, to, to 
gain back time, but also to have more information about simple things that we can see with the naked eye. So in sports, you can admire a beautiful match, uh, you know, a beautiful sports offering, and data gives us the ability to understand what the smallest of change can drive in terms of performance. Um, so that, again, when, when a player, you know, we, we use it uh, on on-court coaching with our partnership with SAP, when a player um, is, is talking to her coach in years past, it was very much of, well, I think, versus what you know what you think and now that subjectivity has kind of been put on the side because now you can look at data points that show black on white here's what you're doing and if you change then this is what you will deliver in terms of performance or you know you can identify patterns of play that could be tweaked and very simply improved it's the same in business, it's the same in, in everyday life. So, so we do this for the fan because the fan can also dive into, into these information points, but the player ultimately will perform better. Um, it also, you know, we can take it further and further, look at injury prevention, mm -hmm. look at what per periodization means to a specific player. Some players can play longer, deeper than others. Um, there's a lot that comes into play, and the more objective, objectively and scientifically that we can analyze this, the better product, the better performance we will have. However, what this should mean is that our higher brain functions, our intuition, um, should be supported and more finely tuned through these data points, and it shouldn't mean that we don't need our intuition anymore because now we've got all these data points. So it's a very fine balance that you need to walk in a very sensitive way so that you recognize I need this mm -hmm. and actually this is helping my, my human intuition, my mm -hmm. female intuition in our case. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we pride ourselves on that. So, so we need to keep it and, and work with it. Um, so that is as far as data is concerned. Uh, OTT, well, OTT has changed the entire world of entertainment and sports news consumption, and it's given us a lot of space. You know, in 20 years ago, you had to you had to schedule tennis, and it was really tough to do because in tennis you don't ha it doesn't start at this time and ends at this time. You never know when it starts or when it ends. So that's a broadcaster's nightmare. With OTT, it gives us much more space, and it enables us to tell the stories of the athletes, which um, is really hard to do when you have limited broadband space. Mm -hmm. So now these athletes have incredible stories. These tournaments have incredible stories. And, um, you know, like tournament in Istanbul, what about the, the Turkish culture? What about what's playing in Turkey at the moment? It shows a world or it's, it's a window to a much bigger world that, um, that, that is great. That, that is, you know, the color, the culture, the, the taste, the, the character of our sport. And, um, and so the more we can show, the more we are able to tell that story, the better and OTT gives us that that ability, so we mm -hmm. we try to take full advantage of that in in a positive sense. Uh, we are almost out of out of time, uh, but I have two questions uh, which I really like to ask. Uh, one of them is about the tournament, the uh, BMP Paribas Tennis Championship Istanbul, the new tournament that we have at the heart of Istanbul. I would like to get your uh, quick opinions about the tournament. Uh, how, uh, what do you think of the tournament, the, uh, the performance in September, and the future of it? Well, first of all, Turkey is a very important market for us. As you know, we played our finals in Istanbul. Yep. And I have to tell you, every one of our members 
uh, our players love Istanbul. What is there not to love about <laughs> Istanbul, right? So it is a beautiful city. It is so culture rich and um, the, the food, the people, the, the cats. I actually got bitten by a cat when I was in <laughs> Istanbul and and I went to to the doctor then. The, the Turkish doctor looked at me as if I had landed from Mars. Why would you ever be holding a, a stray cat? But anyway, so I love Istanbul and the tournament. There is a continuation of what was started with the finals and well, and even before the finals, because we used to have a, a tournament in Istanbul before the French Open. And so I think it's got there is tremendous innovation in, in Turkey happening with the background of its incredible heritage, right? So in a way, we've got these similar parallel identities, but yours is much longer and much, much richer. And um, so, so I think it is a, a fantastic marriage to keep growing and to, to keep building on. And I hope that we do. And I look forward to coming back to Istanbul as soon as possible. We look forward to having you here, uh, safe from cats, <laughs> next time, hopefully. Um, and uh, my last question is about uh, you, actually, because you've been one of the game changer women in sports uh, business. You've been in this industry since 1988, uh, starting with Octagon as uh, Yes. As one of the first uh, women agents in the business. Uh, now you're leading the world's biggest woman sports organization. Um, I would like to ask you, what would be your advice on uh, young women who are new in this business? Well, interestingly, Amir, that, that advice it, you know, when I started in 1988, uh, it, it was very, very different to what it is today. And I think the the young women starting in the sports industry have a huge advantage. And we started this conference by by uh, pointing out how important history was to the future, which applies to our athletes. They thank the original nine every day but it, it also applies to women in business that today we have created actually an opportunity where women are targeted to, you know, if, if there is an, an, an opening somewhere and there's a woman who fits, who fits the job description and, uh, and is a good fit, then she will actually have priority to fill that, that position in many ways. Now, I know that nothing is easy and I know that, you know, as a woman, you still are the child bearer and, and that um, that is a huge, huge privilege, um, natural, biological, human pri privilege, but it comes with some career um, sacrifices that, that have to be made. So, so I look at use the opportunity that has been created through decades of of fighting for women's equal rights and um, and then once you to get through the door and once you are through the door then you have to back it up with substance so look at your life as you know if you're in your 20s and you're going to have a family do make make the sacrifices um, that are going to be temporary in your career I mean obviously over deliver under promise, be excellent at your job, but not at the expense of raising your children. You can do it all, but you have to pace yourself and you have to look at your life in chapters and understand that you're not going to give 500% to the job and take on, you know, as much as a human can take on and more until your kids are adults and you know your your kids are always your kids obviously but but the balance will change throughout their lives and um and you know that's hard because you may be on maternity leave and maternity leave is never you know you shut down your computer and your phone but you may be giving your job 30 percent 
and somebody else who's not on maternity leave is giving 150%. And so, you know, you it can be difficult to see that other woman pass you by or that other man pass you by. But you have to just accept, and it's really difficult to do, trust me, I still mm -hmm. have problems with this today, um, achieving this balance involves a lot of acceptance and actually uh, Alistair Garland, my, my colleague at Octagon, and now my son-in-law, Octagon gives you more than you bargain for. Um, no, that's not true. It gives you, actually, it gives you much more than you could ever ask for. Let me frame it that way because that's the truth. But um, he always talks to me about that. You know, you need to accept. Um, and that acceptance is, is, is a big thing. But take advantage of the opportunity that you have in front of you today because it has taken <laughs> decades and the other advice is be good to other women look after your your gender thank you very much for these strong messages uh and uh to the young people and thank you for sharing these valuable insights uh and uh, sparing the time for us uh, we hope to see you in Istanbul, hopefully, uh, when it's safe. Uh, and until then, uh, please stay safe. Thank you very much, Amir, and thank you to everyone who, who made this, this conference possible. And good luck to you. Hope to see you very soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye.